Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. It's part five of my playthrough of Mrs. Thatcher's War, The Falklands, 1982, designed by R. Ben Madison and published by White Dog Games. In the last video, we saw the British ground forces land at San Carlos and start to yomp across East Falkland. We're on game turn 10, and you can see the Argentine flag there. That's for the 25th of May. That is Argentina's national day, hence this warship named after that. So something a little different happens during the Grupo phase of this turn. But first, it's the weather. We're now throwing on this table, if you remember. So let's see what the weather is for turn 10. Ten. Squalls, no air. That's awkward. That means we're gonna miss out all those steps with this little upside down triangle. So it's gonna be a shortish turn. Next it's SAS raids, but that's right up on turn 15, so no. Now, do we want to bring down the diplomacy marker? No, I don't think so, because there may well be a battle here, and that will give us a negative DRM. We're at 15, so hopefully that'll be enough. Grupo's phase. So we're going to throw two dice and see where those Grupo's are going. So one on three and one. And because it is Argentina's national day, they are going to place another two Grupos. It's up to us where we put them, but we are a bit limited. We can't put them here, which would be ideal. So we'll plop them plop one there, one, one there, and the other one there. Now the other problem is, if all 10 Grupos are out on the sectors like they are, and there are British army stacks on camps, we have to flip one of those stacks to its outer supply side. I think we'll flip this one. Because I want to try and move in and attack whatever's in that camp. Now it's the task force phase where we're going to move our ships and planes and attack those Grupos, but one of them is supply ground forces. And normally, and I say normally, we must send escorts up here to supply our ground troops, and this is where we look at the errata, which clarifies what goes on during this phase. Supply ground forces. These sort of replace what's in the rules. No escorts. If there are no escorts at San Carlos, the player must flip two British stacks of ground units to the outer supply side. One escort. If there's only one escort at San Carlos, the player must flip one British stack of ground units to its outer supply side. And two, there's no need to flip any British ground units to their outer supply side. But for the purpose of the above rules, it says, a stack that was already out of supply before the escorts were sent to San Carlos, which is what it is, may be counted as having been flipped out of supply. Example, if a British stack at Douglas Station is already out of supply and you send one escort, the stack at Douglas Station counts as the stack that's flipped, so no additional stacks need to be flipped. So the way I read that is, if we don't send any escorts, two stacks will be flipped, but they're already flipped. So there's no need to send any escorts. That's how I read it. 
which although it means we can't move as many stacks now, it does mean we've got our escorts to attack the Grupos and this warship. Let me know if I've um, read that right, but as there's already two flipped out of supply stacks, that's the same as not sending any escorts. So I think we're gonna send an escort and its submarines to attack the 25th of May. So that goes in the trialer box. We throw a die and we need a five or a six. Oh, three, no. So now we'll send our ships out to attack the Grupos. I think we'll send them up here. So here's the Invincible. So we need three of these. And the Escort, I think. Oh, I meant to mention this at the beginning of the video, but I forgot. I think I made note of it in the last video, but when this stack moved from here to here and encountered the patrol, if we threw a one, two or a three, we cease our movement and end our turn, but we threw a five, so we could move. I don't know what happened there. So we're actually here. So apologies for that. Right, without any further ado, let's get up to the uh, charts and tables and see if these can get rid of those groupos. Here we go then. Three dice. We'll do the invincible first. Eleven. That's okay. Grupo retreats under British anti-aircraft fire. Place Grupo in mainland and if possible, move one random Argentine plane from mainland to the repair pool. Place the British ship in the trialer box, of course, and move the BBC News up by plus one. Right, let's do that. So Grupo back, whoops, to the mainland. Invincible over here. Take a plane out of the old bag of doom. There's actually not many left. Oh, it's a dagger. That goes up there. Raise the BBC News by one. It's up to 16. There we go. Now, the escort. Let's see if we can get rid of that other group. Oh. Eight. No, we don't. No contact. Oh, dear. Well, that's a nuisance. That goes back there. There we go. Argentine air assets phase would be next, but that's one of them with the old upside down triangle. So we don't do that. We don't do the British air assets phase or the Argentine hunter plan phase, air battle phase. So we're straight to the ground war phase and we can do some of that. So supply effects. The BBC news level is seven or lower. Flip one face-up stack of British ground units in a camp on the East Falkland map to its outer supply side. Morale has dropped. No, we're at 16. The next thing we do is move our troops. And the only one we can move is this one with our Gurkhas in it. And we can move two camps as long as there are no blocks. So we move here, excuse me, to Letterbox Hill. And then we're going to move up to here and see if we can enter that camp. If we can get rid of this uh, unit. So let's see what it is. Oh, it's a proper army unit. And it's, if I can get it in focus, whoops. Not sure it's going to let me, but it's got a value of seven. And what have we got here? We've got... Four, six, four, six, and three. That's 13. 13 to seven. Both sides are going to throw a die, add that on to their combat strength. But there are some ground combat DRMs we have to look at. So these don't apply because of this little triangle. To the side defending in mountains. Don't think they're mountains down there, no. But look, there is a 
settlement, which will be good. Just see that. If we can get into there, we don't have naval gunfire support. The KLF aren't on the map. If the BBC news level is 16 or higher, yes, it is. It's 16. We get a plus two. None of those others apply. Diplomacy isn't on there, and the Pope isn't on the map. So, plus two. Let's pop that on there. Plus two for the Brits with the blue dice. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, just as well. Double six. The Brits win. So what do we get if we win? Bad things happen if we lose, but if we win, we can raise the BBC News by three or five if there's a settlement there. And yes, there is. So up by five, it goes right to 19 again. If the Argentine was a red or white star, it's white, it's removed from the game. There we are. We've got our first settlement. And that is it. That's all we can do in that phase, the ground war phase. It is now the last phase, the logistics and invasion phase. So the first thing we do in this phase is reset. Any British stack which is currently out of supply is now unflipped and turned face up. That's good. There's our one with our helicopter. There are no Grupos turned face down. All units in the trailer box now move back to the total exclusion zone, along with these. Admiral and Naya. Let's see if we can get rid of this uh, 25th of May back to port. Oh, that's a four. He's going back to the mainland. On your bike. Finally, it says, if there are now any Argentine ships at sea, flip one face-up stack of British ground units in a camp to its outer supply side. No. Next is Argentine parts shortage. Well, that's not going to happen because we have to have more than three in the repair pool. So it's on to repair. British and Argentine units in their respective repair pools may now return to active use. Well, regardless of the weather, the Brits can always move one of theirs. But we are at squalls. So what's that do for the Argentines? If the current weather is squalls, all planes still in their repair pools Remain there and do not return to service this turn. That's good. Political factors. Remove the Pope and the diplomacy marker if they are in the current turn record track. Nope. The Chilean radar unit is also not on the map. So is now news headlines. So we're throwing a die and adding 10 to it. One. <laughs> Dear, so that's 11. Black Buck Air Raid, Peace Plan, Shady Arms Dealers, Sidewinder, Viva Argentina, Ooh. and Collision. Don't look good, does it? Right. Black Buck Air Raid, we've had this before. Vulcan bombers from Ascension Island bomb Stanley Airport to degrade the Argentine garrison's supply line. A daring but largely ineffective mission that was just as popular with the British public as it needed to be. Roll a die and increase the BBC News number by that amount. Well, no, we're right up the top there. But if we throw a five or a six, we can retreat one of those blue stars that have crept out back into Stanley. Because while they're out on the paths here, on the camps, we have to attack them to push them back. And that takes time. So. Let's see, five or a six. 
Oh, get in. Is it just one or all of them? No, one. Oh, right. Oh, chosen randomly. Okay. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Four. That's this one. Back it goes. That's something at least. Peace plan. The UN makes another peace proposal trying to square the circle between macho Argentine demands for the islands and Britain's insistence that the islanders must be free to choose their own future. The player must either reduce the BBC news number by minus three by rejecting the peace offer or else place the diplomacy marker on the next turn box on the turn track and agree to waste time discussing it. If all goes well, we've got a few combats going on, so we're not going to do that. We'll reduce the BBC News by three, down to 16, and have fingers crossed. Shady arms dealers, oh dear. Britain's enemies work behind the scenes to arm Argentina. Roll one die and apply the result. It's a two. Israel's Menachem Begin takes revenge on the UK for World War II Jewish policy. Return one lost dagger, a DG, from the discard pile to the Argentine repair pool. Oh, crikey. Well, I'm not um, putting uh, Donadil back, so we'll take this one. Sidewinder, don't think that's going to apply. Ground base Harriers are modified to carry US built AIM 9L Sidewinders. Move that many face up Harriers on Ascension Island to the TEZ. No, they're all gone. They're all in the TEZ, so we can ignore that one. Viva Argentina, this is the one I was dreading. It says this event does not occur if Britain has air superiority in Sector E. Well, nobody does because of the weather. So that means those Blue Star units up there can now creep out again. So they're just going to move out. These are going to move here and here. This isn't good, by the way. And this one moves back out. That's bad news. And collision. Roll one die. On a six, remove one British Harrier. Your choice from the game. It has been mysteriously lost at sea. On any other roll, Move the Harrier to the repair pool instead. It can't be used next turn. So don't throw a six. Oh, oh, oh five. Uh, let's take one of those. And that's the end of the rather grotty news headlines. Air scramble. No, there's nothing to put back. So it's the end of the turn. We move up. To turn 11. So once again, rolling for the weather. Oh, crikey. No, 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 no. Gales. We skip a turn and this goes to turn 12. Oh my goodness. I was very optimistic at the beginning. It now looks like we're not going to make it. But let's see. Let's roll for the weather again. Six. That's fair. Right. SAS raids would be next, but no. A few more turns before that happens. Diplomacy. No, I think we'll take a chance. So it's the Grupo phase. Let's see where it's going. One. There. So I've got to flip one of our ground unit stacks to the out of supply side. OK, let's flip this one. Again, that does mean 
We've got to have air superiority in air sector A and B because they're moving from air sector A to B. And if we don't have air superiority in three sectors, another stack will get flipped. Oh dear, right. We'll worry about that later on. It is now task force phase. Now, we're gonna to have to send one up here to supply, but it says, if there is only one escort at San Carlos, the player must flip one British stack of ground units to its outer supply side. That's already done. So that's okay. Now we're gonna send uh, the rest of these to try and get rid of some groupos. Now, as I said earlier, we have to get air superiority in these two. Well, I think we've got to try and get rid of these groupos here. So we'll send the Hermes and the Harriers there. We'll send an escort with her. All right, we'll send Invincible on its own. I know, I know, taking a risk to see if we can get rid of those at least. But as I keep reminding everyone in my videos, you will play this completely different. Let's get up to the charts and tables. We'll do the Hermes first in Air Sector A. Oh, that's okay, 11-12. That's the usual Grupo retreats under British anti-aircraft fire. Let's get down there quickly and do that. Yes, you've probably been screaming at the monitor. Of course, I forgot to add the Harriers to the Invincible, so we'll do that now. There we go. Right, that's okay. So, Grupo back to the mainland. Hermes in the trailer box. We'll take a plane out of the bag. What have we got? Oh, that's a good one. It's a Mirage. So that goes up there. Oh, we've got four planes now. And the BBC News now goes up to 17. Right, let's try the Escort. Oh, another good one. Again, Grupo retreats under British anti-aircraft fire. So, Grupo back. Escort to the trailer box. Oh, not many planes left in the bag. Ho, ho, ho. Mirage. Excellent. And up to 18 on the BBC News. Let's see how the Invincible gets on. Another good throw, 14. Again, Grupo retreats under British anti-aircraft fire. Three out of three. So that Grupo back. Invincible the trailer box. Another plane. Ah, it's a little A4. And the BBC is back up to 19. So it's Argentine air assets phase. And the target sector will still be A because we've got more ground troops in that sector. So now we roll a die and see which one of the Grupos will deploy their planes first. Oops, one again. <laughs> Nothing in one. So we're down to Sector C with four aircraft. But there's only, there's only two in the bag. So we've got a, a Mirage and an A4, and that's it. They're going into Sector C. Now it's the British air assets phase. And we need to have air superiority in sector A and B so we can move our troops. And if we don't get air superiority in three 
air sectors, the Argentines will be able to flip another one of these stacks. But the way it looks, I don't think we've got much of a problem. We've been very lucky. My only concern is can we yomp across East Falkland fast enough? Also to our advantage, there are no Roundel planes left. They're all in the repair box. So we just need a couple here for air superiority and a couple here. And let's see if we can take out these. So it's the Argentine Hunter plan phase, but there are no Roundel planes, but we'll throw a die just for the, uh, just for the giggles. It's a six, and that is Air Force Plan T. Lamidozo pursues a compromised plan. All Randall planes on East Falkland move to the target air sector. No, there aren't any. We've cleared them out. So the Argentine reaction. That's another six. which is this one. Again, I won't uh, try and pronounce it, but it says move all eligible planes to the target sector. Those can't because they are in a battle, which is now going to occur. Do the Argentines have any ground support? Well, in here, they've got two units. So yes is the answer to that. They will get a plus five. Do we get anything? Yes, we do. We get a plus one on our ground support for each British held civilian settlement. I think we've got one here, haven't we? Yep, there's one. Nothing else, just checking. No, so that's a plus one. But we don't have any ground forces in that air sector. So the odds for the Brits, we've got 42 plus our four, which is 46. And the Argentines have 13 strength points, but plus five, that's 18. That works out just over 250%. So we're down on the 200. Oh, three. Exchange. The Argentine planes will go up to the repair pool, but we have to place an equal amount of strength points of planes in our one. So these are off to the Argentine repair pool. Quite a load in there. So that's 13, we'll move those down. So we've got to get rid of two of these to the repair pool. There we are. And we have air superiority in three sectors, A, B and C, good. It is now the ground war phase. Let's just get rid of that for a moment. So just checking if the BBC news level is seven or lower, we would have to flip one face up stack to their outer supply side. But no, we're right up the top at 19. If we don't have air superiority in at least three air sectors, we have to flip a stack. But no, we're OK with that. And if we don't have air superiority in air sector A, the Argentines will launch an attack on any escorts in San Carlos. But no, we're OK. So we're yomping and helicoptering our units. So we'll move this one. That goes there. Nothing on there. So we can now move into the teal inlet. And see what that is. That is, oh, it's a patrol. 
So there's going to be a small skirmish after which the patrol will disappear. But if we don't throw four or more, we have to move back to the previous camp. Right. Might get that in there so we can see what's going on. Oh, lucky. So five, so that disappears out of the game. And we now move in. We've got another settlement, which is good. Now the helicopter units will move into here and we'll attack this 10 strength unit. What have we got here? Was that it? Nine? <laughs> Dear. Nine against 10. So each side is going to roll a die, add on their strength points, and whoever has the highest score wins. But we do have some ground combat modifications. Let's check those out quickly. So no Pukara. To the side with air superiority in the air sector, that's us. We get a plus two. Are they in the mountains? No, we don't have naval gunfire supports. The KLF aren't there yet. There they are. The weather isn't fog or squalls. I missed that out last time, didn't I? BBC News is 16 or higher. Yes, it is. It is 19. So we get another plus two. That's plus four. And these two aren't on the map. So that's it, so it's a plus four. So we get a plus four to add to our nine. And they have a 10 without any modifiers. Blue for the Brits, red for the Argentines. Six plus 10 is 16 for the Argentines. Nine plus five is 14, plus four is 18, we win. That's removed from the game. We would get plus five to our BBC News because it's a settlement, but we're right up the top there. So we can move on with our helicopter to the next one. And it is, oh, it's a nine again. It's a nine. We've got our our nine. Once again, we've got a plus four because we have 16 or more on the BBC News and we do have air superiority in that sector. Looks good to me. Argentines get nine plus two, that's 11. We have nine plus four, 13 plus another four, 17, we win. And this again is removed. We can't add any more to the BBC News. Whoops. And we're at Goose Green. We can carry on because the weather's good, but also we've got air superiority in this sector as well. So let's do that. We'll move 10, 9, 8, 7, Oh, we've got to stop here. No, mountains don't affect helicopters, they fly over them. But we've got to stop there because we don't have air superiority in this sector. But we've come quite a way, which is good. So that's the ground war phase over. It's logistics invasion phase now. And we're straight away to the reset part. Any British stack which is currently out of supply can be turned over again. All units in the trialer box now move to the TEZ. That includes this and these. Whoops. Admiral Anaya. Let's see what uh, happens to that 25th of May. Six, 
stays in the mainland. And that's good because if it did come out onto the map, we would have to flip one of our British stacks. Argentine parts shortage. So you can see we've got more than three. We have to start with the lowest non Randall aircraft. So what we got here, we've got, there we are. I think that's it, isn't it? An A4 and we can do it again. So we'll take another A4. And they go up to the discard pile to join the others. Repair. Brits can always bring one back. But as the weather is fair, can now return to use. Forgot to turn my light on. Hope it wasn't too dark. So these go back to the bag. And these back to the TEZ. There we go. Any political factors on the map are placed back. No, we don't have diplomacy, the Pope or the Chilean radar on the map. So it's the news headlines. We're adding 12 to the die roll. Four plus 12 is 16. Oh no, it's this one. Look, Viva Argentina. They're going to be creeping out again. We haven't got uh, air superiority in that sector. Ah, the Kelper Logistics Force is coming out. Shady Arms Dealers. Fleet Street demands results. Uh, Black Buck Air Raid. Buckingham Palace and Argentine Surface Action. Right. Viva Argentina. Yep, we're getting to know what that one is. We don't have air superiority, so they're all moving forward one. This is terrible. Kelper Logistics Force. If the British player controls any settlements, yes we do, we may deploy or move the KLF unit. Place it in any stack of British ground units, or if it's already on the map and we, we draw this again, we can move it to a different stack. These Kelpers, by the way, which is the sort of nickname for the Falklanders because of the kelp seaweed, which is in abundance on the shores, remained fiercely loyal to Britain during the 74 days of Argentine occupation, a fact that concerned Argentine officers and traumatised Argentine conscripts some of whom had been told they were liberating oppressed Spanish speakers chafing under British rule in Las Malvinas. Despite being outnumbered more than five to one by the invading garrison, the Kelpers organised non-violent resistance, even sabotaging Stanley's water system and electrical grid. Out in camp, the Kelpers logistics force provided invaluable guide service, even in combat, to British troops who didn't know the land. Some survivors lived for years with the burden of PTSD. Oh dear. So, it's coming on the map, and there we are. The KLF, I can't get it in focus for some reason, there we are. So which one are we going to put it on? Well, this will enable the stack that has this on it to move three instead of two. Can't put it on there, of course, because they're whizzing high above us. These are the furthest behind, so we'll pop them there. Shady arms dealers. Oh, dear. Let's see what we get this time. Oh, that's the same as we had before. Israel's Menach in Begin takes revenge on the UK for World War II Jewish policy. Return one lost dagger, a DG plane, from the discard pile to the Argentine repair pool. We got any? Oh, thank goodness we have. Otherwise, we'd have to return Donadil, I think. 
So that goes back over here. Fleet Street demands results. Public opinion goaded by the media. I've had to do this one again because I completely misread what was going on, so apologies. We haven't done the result of it yet, so we're okay. But it says, public opinion, goaded by the media, wants to see visible progress in the war. If the San Carlos landing zone is not yet British controlled, you fail. No, we're okay, we've got that. If Darwin is British controlled, so there's Darwin, but you do not control Fitzroy, which is there. No, we don't control that. You fail. And if Goose Green is British controlled, Yes, but you control fewer than one camp adjacent to Stanley, or we don't control any of them. That's those three there, Wireless Ridge, Tumble Down, or Mount William. You fail. So we failed. If you fail, roll a die and subtract it from the BBC News. Great. Oh, that's not too bad, too. Black Buck Air Raid. That's the one with the Vulcan bombers bombing Stanley. If we throw a five or six, we can push one of those sort of blue units back one camp. And whatever we throw, we can increase the BBC news. So let's see what we get. Five or six is what we want to push one of them back. Five. Excellent. Up goes the BBC News, and what are we going to push back? We'll push back this, this one. There we go. Oh, apologies, I had to stop recording for a while there, just as we are about to do Buckingham Palace. So, this may successfully occur only once, and only if the British have landed at San Carlos. And there are currently no British forces in the San Carlos landing zone itself. So that's okay. Politicians order the Scots and Welsh guards at Ascension Island, fresh off public duties, i.e. parades at Buckingham Palace, into battle. Place both units in one or two British stacks of your choice, subject to these restrictions. Well, I assume we can use the helicopter stack. Doesn't say we can't, but these restrictions. The Scots and Welsh may be placed on any stack of British ground units or in two different stacks if you prefer. For each unit, Scots or Welsh landing, roll one die for that unit and add the number of British controlled ports anywhere on the map, marked with anchors. Then subtract the number of British planes in the air sector where the ground unit is being deployed. If the total is positive, subtract the total from the BBC news level. Right, so let's see where we're going to put them. What have we got here? Excuse me. 4, 10, 13. That's 8 plus the Royal Artillery, 1 or 5. Let's put the Scots guards with the helicopter. So now we've got to find out how many ports we have. I think there's one up here. Yep, teal inlets. We've got one, two, three, I think. No. Yep, so three. We now roll one die and add three to it. Four plus three is seven. Now we subtract the number of British planes in the air sector, which is here. So seven minus four is three. And if the total is positive, we've got to subtract that from the BBC news level. Oh dear, right, so three down, one, two, three. Now, where are we gonna put the Welsh? Let's put them with the KLF uh, two, right. Or die for them. 
Come on, nice and low. Six. Oh dear, oh dear. Six plus three is nine. Minus two comes down seven. I think this is modelling the fact that um, this move by the government was a bit of a fiasco and a disaster. Lots of lives were lost. So that's that. That's going to be a nuisance for our um, attacks next turn. But there we go. That is Buckingham Palace. Last one. Argentine surface action. British ships are diverted to deal with fishing vessels fitted out as spy ships or to interdict blockade runners smuggling supplies to the occupied Falklands. One British escort ship must move to the trailer box. It can't be used next turn. Oh dear, right. There we go. And that's the news headlines. Next, air scramble. All British planes in sea zones and sector boxes move to the TEZ. There we go. All that's left to do now is to move up the game turn marker to, unlucky for some, turn 13. And you know what? I think we'll leave it there. A lot has happened again. We're lucky we've still got our warships. We've got the Scots and Welsh Guards on to the map, albeit at the expense of the BBC News coming down to a dangerously low level. Still not convinced that we're going to make it. This game is starting to bite back. These moving forward will not help us at all, but we'll see how we go. So this has been part five of a playthrough of Mrs. Thatcher's War, The Falklands. 1982, a game published by White Dog Games and designed by R. Ben Madison. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I tell you what, I'm having great fun playing this. But if you did, and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel. The channel is nearly at 3,000 subscribers, would you believe? So if you can help us out there, it would be great. Another thing that helps is pushing the like button of the old video, the thumbs up. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push the bell. Leave a comment. Again, if I've made any little misplays, let me know. It'll help me and everybody else that's interested in the game. Or just leave a comment saying you're enjoying it. That would be great too. Thanks as always to my subscribers. Thank you very much. And just before I go, one last thing. If you wish to support the channel a little bit further, well now you can, you can buy the channel a coffee. And those coffees go towards maintaining the channel and enabling it to continue to upload new content. If you wish to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description and thank you. So, what will happen next time? Will the British forces be able to yomp and helicopter across the island over to Stanley without being held back too much? Well, join me for the next video to find out. So until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.